He is a, uh, an actor, a musician, and just a really cool guy. His name is Zach Callison, and he is here for his panel on music and acting. Welcome, Zach Callison. Hey, hey. Hello. Hey, thanks for showing up on a Sunday, guys. It's another one for you. I'll probably get through both of these. There you guys. go. Well, thank you for coming to MomoCon again. Always. This is this is my most tenured con now. This is my third MomoCon. Yes. I mean, was I'm pretty sure this was one of your first that you came to. Yeah, in 2016, it was among the first, like, five, I think. And it is my favorite convention now. Oh, well, thank you. Atlanta loves Make you. Fun. We're thank glad you. you are here. Um, and you have had just an amazing career in general. Um, I would love to talk about how, like, of course, everyone's going to ask, where you started um, with your career, how young you were, and kind of like the journey that you've taken to get to where you are right now. Well, about 30 years ago. Uh, <laughs> actually, I, I, I've been in the business for 15 years, which is um, a surprise to some people, but I, I did a play when I was seven. Fell in love with that. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri, by the way. Um, did that, and then I did a lot of theater around St. Louis, and eventually... It fell into film and television. Uh, one movie came through St. Louis, which never happens. And I got like a, a scene that got deleted from the movie. And uh, it was deleted from a movie that never actually came out, <laughs> which is a true Hollywood story. <laughs> that happens all the time. But I, I fell in love with it. I was like throwing M&Ms into a cup in this scene and like talking to Clayton Crawford of all people. And I was like, yeah, I want to do this, Mom. Like, can we do this? She's like, we live in Missouri, so... <laughs> Probably not, and then I bugged them for months and months and months, and then we ended up getting some interest from some agencies in Los Angeles eventually, and that was 11, 12 years ago. Awesome, and it wasn't just, so we, most of us here possibly know you from Steven Universe, but um, you showed up on the Goldbergs. What are some other projects that you've worked on just in the past, I don't know, let's say four or five years? Yeah, that, that's definitely when like the, the work really picked up for me. I'm very fortunate. Um, Goldbergs has had me in for eight or nine episodes now, um, and they just got renewed for season six, which is a big deal. And they got they got their spinoff too, which I'm not on, but that's that's doing really well. <laughs> it's cool. Um, I was on Just Add Magic for Amazon. I was the villain for season two, which w I I was like, oh, you want to cast me as the villain? Like, I, I hope you know what you're doing, but yeah, I'm down. And it ended up being really really fun. I was playing like a time traveling, sixteen year old like greaser with a pompadour and a leather jacket, uh, who was like hell bent on like ruining these adorable girls' plans for making making friends with people. And I was just doing all these nasty, terrible things. So rude. I, I had a good motive in the end, but I was, yeah, I, I did a lot of dastardly stuff. It was really fun. Um, and, and I was on camera, too. I, I, uh, I've done some other animation work, and I'm working on a new show right now, but I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. Oh, well, if you feel like you want to before the end of the evening, just let us know. Um, I'll, I'll before the end of the panel. The NDAs. Um, and also, I thought it was pretty cool you did uh, some voiceover work for some different channels um, for, I can't remember what it was, but. The I, 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 yeah, I worked for Disney Animation at one point for Sophia the First, Cartoon Network, obviously. Um, I'm, I'm working with DreamWorks right now for that new project. Um, yes. Ooh, that's a good one, because DreamWorks has been putting out some really, really great animations. Yeah, the DreamWorks television, that uh, this has been such a great thing. It's it's. It's created a ton of jobs for actors, and, and they're making some really cool spin-off series, and um, I'm really happy to be working with them. A lot of their shows have been really inclusive, too. Um, do you, like, in terms of just gender, sexuality, anything like that, is that, I don't know if you can say it, but are any, is a show you're working on maybe going to be kind of based like that? Like shows like She-Ra and Voltron, who have um, done it? Not, not so much, to my knowledge. Um, it's very much like a like an adventure action adventure type show. Okay, yeah. I'm just really trying to milk this. You can tell <laughs> it's like totally. Does it have the word the He Man in it? <laughs> <laughs> I just I don't know. I want that to be a show. So so which Thundercats spinoff are you on, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> the the one or the one? The yeah. one. <laughs> that would be great. Um, so in terms of acting, where uh, where do you find that you kind of get like your most inspiration? Um, what kind of gives you that drive? What, what do you prefer in terms of being on screen and, and acting in the camera? What is the difference between those two? Or do you prefer one over the other? On camera versus voiceover? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Um, it, it's interesting. So I, I find voiceover to be the most natural to me. Um, probably I've gotten a little more like, you know, week in, week out practice with it. But also it, it's it's interesting how different the, the approach is when you're trying to channel all of your, your emotion that you need to convey into one medium, which is your voice. You know, you have so much so much else going on on camera with your facial expressions, your body language, your um, the, the technicalities of, of cheating the camera and, you know, playing off light. And uh, film, film acting is a very precise, technical, almost mechanical thing sometimes. And voiceover is in its own way, too. You know, doing multiple takes of the same line back to back and not having anybody else in the booth sometimes. But you're you're channeling everything to one single focal point in your voice and that's uh, that's almost freeing at, at times it's almost like a it's easier it's an easier thing to focus on by putting it all into that one one point okay awesome um, and as you've been on Steven Universe firstly was it really cool this weekend to do you get a lot of time to hang out with your other cast members yeah that's why you know we, we see each other in the studio occasionally but we love doing these conventions because not only do we get to see the fans, but we're all hanging out together. And Susan, Susan's not in the booth with me almost ever, obviously. So <laughs> <laughs> well, no, you don't have any scenes together. Storm in the room, where she was playing like like fake imaginary Rose. Um, we did that one together, which I was really grateful for because there's a lot of cast members, major cast members that I've never done a session with, like Tom Sharplin, who plays Greg. I've never recorded with him because he lives in New Jersey. Wow, that's actually really interesting to hear because I would have loved to have like a jam session between you guys, like a real one. I know, we met like twice. It was <laughs> really funny. Um, yeah, I was hoping we would be able to record at some point before the, the show ends, but we'll see. We'll, we'll see. I know he was in LA one time and I happened to not be in town at that one time, so. <laughs> like, sorry, sorry cartoon you. dad, missed you. you know, come through in your van next time. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> I have another question on this. He's a great casting choice, I have to say, though. Like, he, he does Greg perfectly. The The story of how Rebecca, she she did not audition for the role of Greg. She wanted Tom for it from the beginning. Um, he does a show called The Best Show. It's this really, really funny radio show on the East Coast, up in New Jersey, where he's from. And she was a listener to it all through college and for many years and was a big fan and just hit him up with an offer, like, hey, do you want to <laughs> be in my cartoon? And... Yeah, that's that's how he's great. That's super cool. Well, since you've been working on this show, uh, Rebe Rebecca has made some really amazing choices in terms mm. of her story, um, her voicing, and I think it's interesting how you start out younger and something that just happens with guys' voices, they change throughout the show. Has that, um, it seems like it's pretty been seamless in the show, but how have you been, how had you dealt with that going for when you were recording? Were there any like, major hiccups that popped up, especially when you're recording music? Not, I mean, yeah, it did happen. Um, I was like, I was really nervous the whole time because I, I had lost two other shows when my voice changed because I couldn't play like eight-year-olds anymore. And Steven was obviously a different case, but I was in paranoia mode. I'm like, where'd every voice crack? Like, I get closer to being fired. <laughs> and that was not the case at all. Like, they wanted him to age. They wanted him to go through that. Um, I didn't know that at the time. So <laughs> I was, every every session, I was trying to like keep my voice out. They're like, no, it's like, it's fine if he, you know, progresses with you. Um, Rebecca really, I, and they told me later, like, they really liked my original audition because I sounded like a child, because I was. Um, you get a lot of adults playing children in animation, and that's that's ideal for certain tones of certain shows where you need that that kind of, you know, comedic talent or whatever But um, that, that an adult can provide. But the, for Steven, it's so naturalistic, and it's so um, down-to-earth in a lot of ways, so that was really important for them early on, and I, I think they knew that came with the territory that the voice would change at some point. Um, honestly, I had a pretty pretty painless voice change compared to some others. I, I'm still a high tenor, and I have a lot of my upper range, and we're able to do a lot with that. Cool. Um, before we kind of transition directly into your music, um, I know you had released an album recently, um, and then we had a few more uh, episodes that came out. Of course, they were probably being uh, shot at the time. But I feel like some of the music that they had in like the latter seasons of the show had a little bit more of a rock flair to them. Did you have any sort of input on the music uh, in some of the later seasons? Not directly, but I think Rebecca caters things in the show, especially later on in the show, around us. Um, the characters take take inspiration and note from the actors, and that's, that's true with all of us, I think. Rebecca has, has said that publicly. Um, and she knows that that's a lot of the kind of music I'm into, so I, I think that 
might have had a, a subtle part to play, but I I have not been in the the writers' room for for songs specifically, except. Well, there was one I was like around for when they were finishing it, and I helped with it, but I, I wasn't like actually writing it for them. Well, which one was that? Uh, it's not out yet. <laughs> Don't worry. Oh yeah, because the next movie is a musical, so there's a lot more. What music. movie? <coughs> Wait, we have. Oh, I, I gave mine away. There were buttons going off. Yo, around, did you guys so see the buttons they were giving out? Cartoon Network was here. Yeah. Earlier in the weekend. It's so hype. They were super cool and taking pictures with hopefully some of the cosplayers got pictures with Cartoon Network. Um, I'm sure it's going to be on social sometime soon. Um, so that character on the buttons is ah, so so cool. I can't wait. I can't wait. I hear I hear their name is a secret, so we can't we can't name. Yeah, it. I've like almost said it this weekend a few times. So <laughs> 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 whoops, I haven't actually said it. I'm trying to like my my integrity to not those things out all right so rainbow <laughs> super diamond cords oh my goodness <laughs> i knew it <laughs> red rainbow super diamond cords 2.0 2.0 <laughs> <It's> reloaded <laughs> electric <laughs> boogaloo electric van um so to just touch on this um welcome back to social media thanks i i'm not staying it was <laughs> i was just posting for momocon but we appreciate that, and we also kind of appreciate, not to go deep into it, that, um, you know, your contribution that you've made for some of the things that are happening here in our state. And I just think that's really cool that a lot of celebrities are standing up for that. So I wanted to just kind of like. Thank you. I mean, with the whole entertainment industry boycott and that's happening with Georgia, the other option was cancel, and I was like, no. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was like, that doesn't, that just hurts you guys. Right. Uh, no, We'd miss you. Yeah. Um, so cool. So that's that. Yeah. A portion of the proceeds of the table are going to ACLU of Georgia, and we're taking additional donations at the table if anyone feels so inclined. We have a jar. So um, if you're so inclined, please come by later. Yeah. We have a uh, – his autograph session is at 2.30. We'll probably mention that at the end, like after this panel. So definitely go by and see before we leave again. Um, yeah, that, that's my last one for the weekend because I fly out after. So. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, see ya. <laughs> Um, that's that that one like the the, the half-hearted finger guns. I, I learned that from Grace Rolex. <laughs> that's like her <laughs> her thing. She's so quirk. I love her. <laughs> Who, by the way, if you haven't heard my album, she's on the album as well with on the feature, um, doing like a. Uh, she's actually playing like uh, the voice of my conscience and is like arguing with me in like a Hamilton style like rap battle. It's pretty sick. So check it out. So I do actually want to talk about that because um, the album that you released was incredibly fun. Thank um, you. That's one way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> it was definitely very different, and I want you to just express your inspir where your inspiration came from it. It's a very cool rock album. Um, I could hear, like, a lot of the different elements that are going on, and I need to know who Juanita is. So okay. if anyone's listened. So about that. Um, you're late. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. That's Keely and Mac. Everyone say hi, Keely and Mac. Hi, Keely and Mac. That's that's very important. That's okay. We were just transitioning to Picture Perfect Hollywood Heartbreak. So, <laughs> um, yeah, it's. I mean, it definitely has the rock elements, but it's it's definitely in its own weird little niche. Uh, it. it People, people that are into groups like me, like like Panic at the Disco and Twenty One Pilots, and like that's that's very it's very theatrical. There there is a hip hop rap element to it, but it's it definitely takes a page from my musical theater days, which I had almost lost touch with until I started writing. I'm like, hey, wait a second, um, and it's it's presented in the form of a like a short one act play. It's a it's a, a continuous story from front to back, um, and Juanita is a a love that was very dear to me at one point. And uh, it's basically, it, it's, it's called a picture perfect Hollywood heartbreak in that it's, it's, it's about getting your heart broken initially and then like what happens when someone with, with a lot of you know, eyes on them in, in, in young Hollywood, how they deal with that. Because that's, that's my, my favorite topic to talk about is the, the plight of young performers in Los Angeles because uh, it's something I've seen firsthand and that's, that's definitely a big theme in it. So if you're, if you're into, you know, Theatrical storytelling, it's definitely its definitely something to check out. So around what time did you start um, getting back into writing for music? When did you, like, 
what were you working on? And you're like, you know what, let me just go back into this. What really re-triggered that? Well, I was, I was working on not getting dumped. I got dumped. <laughs> I was 17. It was one of those, like, high school, like, we're going to be together forever relationships. And it's, it's so ridiculous in, in hindsight, now that I'm 30. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? Wait, really? I didn't know that. Oh, my God. <laughs> when did that happen? I believe he is, as of change your mind, yeah. Mm. Um, so the gap between us increases. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I started, I wrote, I, st I wrote the first song on the record like a month after that happened in September of 2015. But I, I wrote it as like catharsis instead of like rocking back and forth in my room. So, <laughs> And then I, I was like, hey, this is kind of cool. Like I should, because the, the inspiration behind it, and there's a song called War on the album. It, it's very like, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> and that was the lead single. But it's very much like it's aggressively calling her out uh, because she was a, and, and is a singer, songwriter, and performer. Um, I mean, we all are in my circle of friends. That's how we all knew each other. And uh, she... She had been working on the same EP for like years and had not released it. So at the time that she was like working on it, I s became a musician, like learned how to write songs, finished the album, put it out. And then a week later, she dropped hers I out of nowhere. Timing. Crazy, Juanita crazy was still crazy waiting. Stuff. And then she's like, oh, sorry, you were waiting. Juanita yeah. was still waiting. <laughs> and that's all right. That's OK. That's all right. <laughs> 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 There's actually some really, really good lyrical work in that. Like, I listened to, me and my roommate were jamming out to it when it first released. It was really disgusting. There's an Instagram story. Don't look for <laughs> it. Um, Thank you. And um, we we're just so impressed by, like, your, your abilities to rap, just lyrically how it was going. Like, is that, what amount of practice do you put into that? Or is that kind of just tie into how um, you practice for anything in your career? I mean, the skills I had acquired as, as a performer and as an actor over the years and as a singer definitely helped me. But I, I got into hip hop like in 2015 for the first time and I, I learned how to rap for the album um, and learned how to write it. And the, the raps that you hear on there now were much crappier versions <laughs> earlier on that I wrote over again many, many times. And it was like a trial by error because you know, you, everybody has their like their bad their bad tracks they write to get to their good ones. But I I basically, I just lost my train of thought, sorry. Yeah, everybody has to write their bad tracks to their good ones, and those tracks started out as my bad tracks, and I like I just basically spent three years tweaking them until they were the final product, and I I, I feel like I, I can actually go forth and say that I rap now to an extent. I don't, I don't consider myself a rapper. I'm not a rapper. Um, <laughs> but it, it's definitely like an influence on my style. It's, it's almost like spoken word, like slam poetry at times too. It, it differentiates between styles. Um, I know that you had a video that you were shooting with like Caleb Hayes, who's also was here this weekend. Yeah. Did some really cool things. Are there any Caleb other like- Caleb Hiles. Hiles, yeah, yeah. Like, yep, that's recorded. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but are there any other inspirations that you uh, can kind of like pinpoint or can think for helping you to produce a lot of the music? And like the videos and things that you were doing kind of on your side? Yeah, I mean, the two music producers I worked with on the album, Anthony Mazza and Chase Ryan, became very good friends of mine through the course of the production. And they, they both took on like mentor roles for me, like teaching me about music production and, um, and how to work on the technical side and the creative side of, of behind the scenes on, on producing records. And um, Chase especially has become like a really, really good friend and, and uh, somebody I'm tight with and, you know, he, he got to see me at my most personal when I'm, you know, writing this album and trying to get the message across, and, and he was very much instrumental in the final product. Um, he's been a big inspiration. Awesome. Um, are you planning to release another album soon? So I, I've been working on some new demos. They're, they're hot. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm getting ready to, like, sayonara for a little while and, like, go backpack around the world and, like, eat borscht in Russia. So, uh, <laughs> um it's not going to come out till like next year at least, but they are just about done and I'm just sitting on them right now. So, so sorry about that, but thank you. <laughs> I want to come back and like really attack it with the proper attention that it's due. Um, if, if anybody saw videos from the tour I did with Nate Wants to Battle, if anybody knows him, he's awesome. I'm also here. Yeah. I, I went on tour with him in August as his like support act for, for his music and it was like one of the best experiences of my life. 
Um, we played a couple songs on that tour that are not on the album, and those are a couple of the ones I'm working on demo-wise right now. Oh. So, yeah. It's Over. hype, man. It, he like we we came to each other in mutual appreciation. We met through Dungeons and Dragons, um, Dark and Dicey. That wow. we had that show for a season, and it was it was really fun. He just we had met each other, and I knew Christina V, who was on the show when we started, and he kind of hit me up out of the blue, like, "Hey, man, like we're putting this together." I'm like, "That sounds awesome!" Like, getting paid to play D and D. I'm like, "Let's do it." <laughs> um, and then like slowly, he's like, "Hey, you want to be in my music video next weekend?" Like, "Hey, you want to come in the studio and hang out?" Hey, do you want to like come on tour with me? I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> that escalated. I was like, I, I'm, I can go on tour. Like, that's a thing I can do. Like, I, I haven't even released my album yet. So I released the album, and then the following week we went on tour, and people, people dug it. So, and we played a D and D campaign on the tour bus. I, I rolled for initiative in a Walmart parking lot in Boise, Idaho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you roll high? Were you successful? What's that? Did you, were you successful with your rolls? I survived the campaign. I survived the campaign. It was it was a two shot we did, and we had a lot of new players. It was like twelve of us. It was it was wow. alarmingly large because the whole tour basically played all the support staff and all the all the band members. Um, Nate DM because he's the only one that could handle something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have um, aside from playing D and D, and like said you are going to go um, kind of like backpacking, being outdoors? What kind of calms you down and like what is the way that you what do you do when you're not working basically uh i watch a lot of baseball i'm a big st louis cardinals fan um who uh, beat the braves yesterday <laughs> but also it's okay it's cool we lost <laughs> the first two games <laughs> um yeah i watch a lot of baseball obviously i write a lot of music um although less lately because i've been preparing to preparing for this trip um i go to a lot of music festivals and raves and electronic music shows, band shows. Um, uh, yeah, I went to EDC last weekend. And uh, I'm going to Bonnaroo next month in this neck of the woods. So awesome. that's that's a big a big thing I'm into. That's cool. Um, I, I, I was at the Momocon rave last night, too. That <laughs> I wasn't going to call you out, but yeah, that was I may have seen you there. That was You may have seen me. You went with me. <laughs> well, I was we all went, me we all went together. <laughs> I <laughs> know we were photobombed. Yeah, I did photobomb them. I, I want to see that, by the way, before I leave, because I, I never got to see it. I think it might be my finest work. It does not exist. <laughs> it was really good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was that was really. I wasn't expecting like a like a dubstep show. I that was I was really into it. Yeah, Momocon brings really good raves. So like I'm gonna go last year. I leave for two years, and y'all hit the bass booster button. <laughs> 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 like, what's going to bring Zach back? Uh, pegboard notes. <laughs> uh, is there a ride available? We got to bring them, too. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's pretty awesome. So, um, I am cool to open up the floor for some questions. All right. Um, we have our mic over here with the wonderful Lee. She will help to kind of screen some. Um, what do you guys want to talk about? Foreign policy, federal highway funding? <laughs> Um, just to be clear, if anyone is going to mention anything Steven Universe related, um, are we season seven? We're good. Wait, season season what? eight? We're good. We got a season like, seven. We, oh, is this? What am I? What's my? Oh, I'm on Voltron brain. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah, there's gonna be mad spoilers through for ch through Change Your Mind probably. Is, so just yeah, know as long that as everybody's okay with that. What's that? No, yeah, no. Like, it was like we're, seven. Yeah, I mean, we're eight. probably gonna talk about what's up to date. So if you're not up to date. You're gonna get spoiled, sorry. Yes. So like earmuffs or whatever it's called. <laughs> Is it spoiler alert? No movie spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the name of that red diamond thing, which is the red diamond thing? Is yeah. that what you think? That's what it's called. Is that, is that yeah, your official fan theory? It's got it's red. Anyways. Um, all right. All right. Hey, first I just wanna say I was actually at your very first show in Nashville with Nate and Oh, that dude, was thank you. Yeah, we jumped in the crowd when you did Bang Rain, so that was fantastic. Dude, yeah, thank you for mentioning that. We did a live band cover of Skrillex's Bang Rang on tour with Nate. Um, at the first show, which Keely was at, we had a horn player, like a horn player and a cello player doing it too, but yeah, man, thank you for coming to that. That was one of our more lively crowds, actually, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, it was one of the best experiences of my life, I have to say. But after you go backpacking around the world, taking some time off, do you actually plan on doing a tour for yourself? 100%. I got I to gotta build up to that. I need to get a better, um, 
I was doing a lot of the music management stuff like myself. I need to get a team built around me. But yeah, that's definitely in the cards in the future. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, thanks for uh, thanks for being there, man. That was that was a fun show. Hello. Hey. Um, so I'm heavily involved in theater at my high school, and Great. Um, since you're like a successful actor, and you said in earlier panels that like theater is your thing, and like you do that in your off time when you need to calm down. So do you have any tips for like being a better actor and like you know getting good at it? Yeah, I mean, the, the, the saying goes, what is it? TV's for writers, films for directors, theater's for the actors. And that it's, it's the purest medium we have to practice our craft. Um, I mean, you're doing musical theater or straight plays? Both. Okay, yeah, the, the key is like, know, know when to be broad, when to project, when to, when to project that musical theater energy and know when to pull it back. The thing I had to learn when I moved to LA to pursue film and television was I was too, I was too broad. I was like doing like hand motions with everything I said and I was screaming all my lines so they could hear me in the back row and it, it's, a, it's an audition room with two people that's five by five. Like, and, um, knowing, knowing your tone is really important um, and being able to go to either extreme, whether it's you know, playing for a 12,000 person crowd or a, a one person crowd um, for a camera, it's, it's really important to know the difference. Thank you. Best of luck, break your leg. Hi, I was wondering on a bad day, what's your go-to songs? Uh, like emo rap, I guess. <laughs> uh, I'm just like emo, like old Linkin Park, <laughs> Nirvana. That's, that's more like sad, angry though. Um, all around me are familiar faces. <laughs> that's, that's my meme sad song. Um, I have a playlist. I was actually, it's, I use it for different things. It's not always my I'm sad playlist. It's also like I'm like really chill playlist. Like really trying to like meditate almost. It's got like Sarah Bareilles and like Bruno Mars ballads in there. But I, I was listening to that on my way here because I was like, it's getting into my Zen mode. But it's also, it's also my very sad boy playlist. So there's some Frank Ocean on there. <laughs> sad boy playlist. Frank Ocean, like Leonard Cullen, Def Cab for Cutie. Can Thank we you. get this playlist on, on Spotify? Is there a sad boy yes. playlist? Does that exist? No, no it's, it's called New York. Uh -oh. I, I had like a really bad day in New York <laughs> and I made it. <laughs> and I haven't been back to New York since. Wow. <laughs> Throw the whole state away. <laughs> like that, I'm like yeah. from New York. I name a lot on my playlist like about, like whatever I'm listening to on repeat in a certain city, I like turn that into a playlist and name it after the city. So I have like a, a Portland, a Phoenix, a Adelaide, a London, a, yeah. So you're in Atlanta or is this for bad days? Only bad days? No, it's just in general. I, I don't have an Atlanta one, though. I'm always out dancing to other people's music <laughs> in Atlanta, so. Makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. Great question. So, so what is your dream role? Let's see. Well, hang on. Let me go on Leonardo DiCaprio's <laughs> name. <laughs> My dream role. I've always wanted to be in an action movie um, and do some minor stunt stuff and, you know, John Wick it up a little bit. Um, <laughs> Uh, that uh, film, feature film in general, like I really want to do more. That's what I came to LA for, and it's what I've done the least of. Um, you get you get involved in all sorts of other stuff along the way, uh, but you know, thrillers, um, action movies. Uh, I'd love to I'd love to do some of that, at least once, um, and then maybe maybe get back and and do some some classic theater. Like I, I've always wanted to revisit my first play, The Music Man, but play Harold instead of Winthrop. Um, so maybe one day I'll do that too. Thank you. I forgot to kind of mention this and kind of ask about it. You actually did a feature film, like a small film with uh, Grace. Yeah, well, we did a, we did a little short um, called Mailboxes. I don't think it's out yet. She's, she's still shopping it around to festivals, but it will be. Okay, cool, cool, Mailboxes. Hi, I'm Joe, and I had kind of a silly question because you mentioned D&D. &D. So I got to know, um, what is your character's class, race, alignment, and what edition did you play? Okay, so... <clears throat> I was a small dick gnome named Wurman Wirecheek. But don't tell me I'm small, only I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> I'm basically Liam Neeson from Taken. But three feet tall. <laughs> and I don't want to take shit from anyone. <laughs> basically, my daughter got kidnapped. By, and I, I, I hate humans because they, they killed all my friends. They ruined my, my business. They, I'm a mercenary. I was like a random mercenary company for like 
missions and stuff um, in the Underdark. And these humans, like, massacred everyone and uh, kid kidnapped my daughter and literally sold her to the circus. So I was going, like, full, like, sicko mode Ooh. on all the humans I could find. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I, alignment wise, it was uh, chaotic good in the end. I, I, I left it, I had him as neutral, and then, like, I ended up switching it mid campaign <laughs> as, as he, like, warmed up to his, his party members. But we were, I was probably, like, the second most good character. In our, in our campaign, and I wasn't that good. <laughs> like we, we were pretty much like we weren't a villain campaign, but we were definitely like an anth like a hard anti-hero <laughs> with an evil slant campaign. <laughs> oh my gosh! Thank you so much, and love you. <laughs> much love. Thank you. Hello. This what isn't up, a question. Gangster? I just want to say, Jeremy Shada, I am your biggest fan. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> this is <laughs> this has gotten out of control. <laughs> Close the panel. Yeah, in front of 5,000 people. <laughs> that would have been funny, honestly. I, I'm, the, the, there's a dank meme uh, that I, I'm Jeremy Shada from Adventure Time. <laughs> people would actually confuse us, like, when we were sitting next to each other at conventions. Like, and, you know, they have the big sign that says our name. They'd look at it. They'd see my face. They'd see Steven. They'd see Zach House and be like, you're Finn from Adventure Time. <laughs> <laughs> it happens all the time. And, like... It's it's kind of gotten out of control because like like we get compared a lot because we're the same age we're like boy leads on Cartoon Network shows and we both have brown hair, and people people confuse us a lot and the meme got out of control and now all my friends in L.A. like will like joke about it. they're like yo Jeremy like, <laughs> like how was your con <laughs> yeah and Mac 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 knows so yeah that's that's the origin of that I don't even think he's aware of how out of control the meme has gotten <laughs> which is even funnier to me. <laughs> He gets tagged. He's probably just like, this is in me. And then move on. The notification. He's like, that's not Jeremy Shada. I'm Jeremy Shada. <laughs> what was that? Did I go to MomoCon this year? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Alright, so what do you think about Ruby and Sapphire in Steven Universe? <laughs> <laughs> They're pushing the gay agenda and it needs to stop. No. <laughs> no. I'm joking, I'm joking. No, we love we love Ruby and Sapphire, like you said. It's it's a beautiful romance. It's it's a beautiful children's book now that's immortalized that way. When when the book came out, we did a um, they have like gallery shows in the lobby of Cartoon Network where they have different artists that work there or guest artists like display their stuff. But for that, they they made a gallery show and every page of the book was up and framed and you could like go through it in sequence. It was really nice. <coughs> Thank you. Hi. Hey. Um, I just want to ask, what was going through your mind whenever you had to record the episode Change Your Mind? Um, I was like, wait, you want me to scream how loud? <laughs> 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 I mean, like, I, I knew a lot of that was coming, and it, I had been, like, pre-briefed on it, and it was, I mean, it was really intense, and it was really fun, but that, that specific moment, we spent, like, 35 minutes at the end of the session doing that scream. That it was really important to Rebecca to get something very specific that she had in mind, um, that the crew had in mind, and um, yeah, she wanted it to be like inhuman, like like a banshee wail, um, <laughs> totally like almost not even sounding like Stephen. Uh, so we specifically saved it so I would have a voice to do the rest of the the episode, and we saved that for last and did it. Um, it was a really really nice cap on a really crazy season. <laughs> did it almost hurt your voice? That one, that one definitely did. Um, but you know, sometimes, like, like video game voice actors will tell you, like, sometimes you gotta, you know, that's part of the job, um, and you'll need to do something that's demanding of that kind of rigor on your voice. Um, yeah, so it's all, it's all good. That's not, that's not the norm at all. I, I come oh, out with my voice intact almost every time. But that, <laughs> that session, we had to go there for that. Alrighty, thank you. <coughs> My question for you is, if you did another album, would you keep it within the same genre, or would you play around with something new? It's definitely going to move move in a, a different direction than I'm already setting my sights on, but it definitely still has that like quirky theatrical quality of, of the, the last one. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of some of the demos we have, we're working on. The the one that's the most complete is like, um, I'd say it's it's... It's war. It's it's like a spiritual successor to war almost, but like 
it's very, uh, we, we're using like program drums instead of real drums. Uh, I want to I want to do more of that and like like more solid like locked in hip hop beats um, rather than like really dynamic drums. Uh, that that's probably the biggest change that's going to happen from this project to the next one. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, so follow up on the D and D. What has been by far the most craziest yet funniest moment you guys ever had or like? scenario that you guys ever went through? This wasn't on Dark and Dicey, but one time my friend was like showing off his like shiny dexterity skill on, on a new campaign and was like, I want to do a cartwheel on the beach and like broke his leg when he rolled a one. <laughs> <laughs> and we had to carry him for the rest of the campaign. <laughs> um, that was pretty incredible. Um, I was playing a character in that campaign. This is before Dark and Dicey, just like with friends. It was uh, Lee Feng. He was a, a, a monk, like a failed like burnout monk that had been booted from the monastery because of behavioral issues. <laughs> and he, he's like remarkably stupid. Um, <laughs> and so like all my points are in like strength, dex, and a little bit in con. And everything is like, he's, he's a one wisdom, one intelligence, he's just, he's a moron. <laughs> but he like, at one point I rolled a 20 on a punch and like, it created a small nuclear explosion. Because <laughs> my DM is awesome. Um, so I'm definitely gonna bring him out of the vault at some point. I'm trying to think of some crazy stuff that happened on Dark and Dicey. Um, there, there was like, there was so much crazy stuff happening every episode. Uh, Christina V's character, um, Anya, was like the wild card and she would like do stuff that would interfere with our campaign and like mess us up all the time just for shiggles. Um, yeah, shiggles, yeah. Um, and, uh, now you know, that's a new word. Um, that she, at one point, um, we went to try and like steal this uh, bracelet that allowed us to do magic in the kingdom um, from this like guard captain while he was bathing in like a, a spring. And we're like scoping it out from the outside of the spring and she just like walks up and like attempts to hit on him and then like go and he comes out of the water and we realize he is a centaur. <laughs> <laughs> and then fails all of the charisma checks fantastically. He's like, leave. You're a lizard person and I don't like you. And then we we basically had to fight this guy. I get knocked out immediately and was not present for the entire fight. I was unconscious. And then they end up killing him and then she like she was a necromancer, so she she like like made like a zombie version of him and then like kept him in like a shack and like would go on like moonlight dates with him <laughs> <laughs> because she, she loved him so much but he, he wouldn't have her in his, his mortal days. So she, <laughs> she created this like zombie that can't talk and just like moans and groans and, and all that and would go and visit him like periodically throughout the campaign. <laughs> BRB, gotta go on date with Centaur Zombie. And things like that happened like multiple times an episode on Dark and Dicey. Like you, you guys should really check out the VODs. It was really, really fun. Oh, you do VODs? What's like, that? You do like a VOD D&D? &D, yeah, th th that was a show we were doing on Twitch. So the, all the oh. VODs are saved. I think it's on Nate's, not Nate's YouTube channel. It's, um, it might be on the official, we were on the official Wizards D&D &D channel on Twitch. So oh. check on their VODs on Twitch and their YouTube channel. Okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah. So with all the twists and turns that happen in um, in Steven Universe, uh, like how aware are you and like the other voice actors of the future plot? I probably am usually the most aware just because I'm in the studio more often and I I talk with Rebecca periodically and I ask her questions and stuff. Um, so occasionally we'll, she'll keep a secret from me on purpose that we agree to just because it's something that we might want Steven and me to learn in the moment to aid the performance, but typically I I know a month or two out like the major, major plot points that are happening, but I I typically really don't see um, what's going on in an episode until I sit down in the studio that morning and they put the board up and they like pitch it to me. I, I like I like doing it as I go and learning it in the moment. Um, on a new show, I would definitely go through the script and like rehearse and do all that, but for Steven, it's like, I, I almost have that flow down where I can get into Steven easily and I just want to repitch the, the episode real time and, and go off of that. 
Thank you. Thank you. Great gospel. Hi. Uh, I was at the Steven Universe voice actor panel yesterday, and yeah. I was in line for the question, but I didn't get to ask this one. Sorry And it about was that. for the whole group, but since you're the only one I've seen here, since the beginning of the series, I've noticed that there's gem stunners. Have you ever heard of those? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> we love those. I had a friend who drew them a lot, and specifically for herself, she would do a lapis, almost very close to the lapis they revealed. Oh, wait, this was before Lapis. Before Lapis was revealed. Oh, that was like early, early then. Wow. Yeah. That was like, that's probably herself. one of the first people that made a gemstone. Her props to your friend for like sticking with us. <laughs> <laughs> my sister's also a very big fan, by the way. This is your sister or your friend you're talking about? Oh, my, my friend, but my sister okay, is also cool. a fan. Well, Thank tell you. Her, tell her I said hello. I will. That, man, that's like, that sucks. <laughs> like, look, at, look at my creative thing I did. Oh, uh, Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever have like um, a favorite line or season to record in the booth? Um, a favorite line specifically? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know how we got away with this one, but a boy on the cusp of manhood can't spend the whole day whackery. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what it sounded like, because it was the teenage Steven with his voice cracking. <laughs> um, yeah, like we, so we get like we get um, notes from S and P standards and practices, the Cartoon Network. <laughs> on different things when they're like, you can't say that, that's a curse word in, in Canada or whatever. Um, or, you know, that's, that's too violent, you can't do that. So we get S&P notes on like, things like, like the word dirt. Like for some reason, people don't like that in certain parts of the world, so we have to like change things. Like weird stuff like that, that's just an example. Um, no S&P notes on that line. <laughs> Not a one. Incredible. Are you looking at that? That's okay. We were, we were all like, Guys, did we get it in? Did we get it in? <laughs> hey, so your hair is pink now. So do you no. have another dimension in it? Like, can you reach your hand inside like Lars? <laughs> yeah, it goes all the way around. <laughs> all right. Um, also, yeah, I just I enjoy your album a lot. Thanks, man. I appreciate we'll it. We'll be here waiting. Thank you. Yeah, you we got, we got as much coming. time as you need. Hopefully, we'll, we'll play a show in Atlanta one of these days. Yes, please. Nate, Nate played a show in Atlanta, but I wasn't able to come on that part of the tour, which, which was unfortunate because I was looking forward to seeing you. Mm. Hi. Um, what's it like to work with the Steven Universe cast? Really, it's just a nightmare, honestly. <laughs> 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 they're, they're family now. It's, it's, it's a really special thing we got going. Um, yeah, I'm very blessed to have them as, as people very close in my life, not just coworkers. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else want to... Jump up. Yes. You can. You You're a theater you actor, aren't you? Ha-ha. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's that's the best training. A lot of video game RPGs. Gaming is my like my origin for nerddom and Comic Con stuff. That's that's like my neck of the woods. Um, I don't game as much as I used to, not nearly as much, but that was like Mass Effect, love Mass Effect, RPG-wise, um, a lot of the Bethesda games, but yeah. Um, no, I've never played any other tabletop RPG, actually. I'd be interested to try some... What is it? Oh, did you? I need to, I need to get mine finally. Like, I see them all the time, and I, I, I always talk to people that are wearing them. They're my favorite. Oh, okay, bet. Uh, I'm really, I'm really into sci-fi specifically. Like I was just, I, I, and some traditional fantasy too. Like I was, I was a Harry Potter fan as a kid. But Star Wars was my jam. Pokemon was my jam. Um, Pokemon? Like I said, Mass Effect. Um, yeah, I, I was always really into, really into sci-fi specifically. So, have you, have you seen the new Pokemon movie? Yes. Who would, who, which would be your Pokemon, like cohort? So my favorite Pokemon is Mantine, which is so weird, and people are always like, what? Um, I can't, like, take a Mantine with me everywhere, because, you know, he's a flap flap, so he needs water. <laughs> so for, like, my day-to-day, -day, like, kicking it, hair across, man. I'll always hair across. Oh, we have Pokemon <laughs> peaked in Gen 2. You don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Gen 3 is actually my favorite, but... 
Mm. And after Gen 5, they don't exist. <laughs> um, one of our really good friends, she actually just started driving recently, and she got a car and named it Juanita. And I was just wondering if you had any other, like, fun fan things that you've heard like that. Yeah, people have, people have like, brought me some really funny stuff. Um, there have been some F Juanita chants at shows, <laughs> which has been really funny. Uh, that's not a real name, so it's okay. I, I gave her a pseudonym so people wouldn't, like, find her and, like, like go, like, Ariana Grande, yeah. full stand girl on her. her st Ariana Grande's stands are, uh, actually, we're live streaming. I'm not going to mention that. <laughs> I don't want my, they know what they are. I don't want my DMs <laughs> to blow up in an hour. Um, yeah, no, th there's been a lot of, like, really creative, funny stuff. I, I'm trying to remember. People have brought me some, like, fan art of the album with, like, funny Juanita notes on it. Um, people have named Juanita have been like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> so Stop screaming at me. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. By the way, it was the, the Juanita thing, that was just a coincidence, or was it a, about the Juanita from the album? It's about her name. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> it is a great name to say. Like, the, me and my roommate, like, that is just, like, our our exclamation, it's like our interjection, it's like, ah, Juanita! You know, like it's really, it's like Tetsuo! Yeah, we, we used to call her Juanita as a nickname, and Patricia, because she's Hispanic, but she has like the most white girl name on the <laughs> planet, and, and is very much aware of it, so we gave her these like really Hispanic, Latin sounding um, nicknames. Um, so she, she felt more in touch with it. Okay, so you said you played Bethesda games. Yes. So you've played Skyrim. Of course. Very important question. Stormcloak or Imperial? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, Imperials. Good. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, that's like, when it came out, everyone's like, Skyrim belongs to the Nords! And people, there was no room for argument, but like, if they, the Thalmor are gonna like wreck them if they if they take over Skyrim, like. Well, and the Stormcloaks are racist, so. Oh yeah, they're they're mad racist. Let's not even to mention that. <laughs> um, yeah, like they 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 stand no chance. They're gonna rebel. They're gonna get their butts kicked in by the by the Thalmor, and it's just gonna be even worse in Skyrim once they win. So like, fight for the Imperials for now and gather strength later. That's my philosophy. I put a lot of thought into this. <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> Do you have any cute stories about your dog? <laughs> oh, yeah, he's sleeping. I can tell one right now. Guys. He's like just curled up all like. He's yeah, so he's cute. <laughs> <laughs> this one time, his like, Omicron panel. He's a wiener he's dog. <laughs> he's like, what? I was sleeping. Stop. <laughs> Dad, put me down. <laughs> I didn't get my eight hours last night. Put me down. <laughs> he sat up here with me for the panel yesterday um, in the big room. So he was like on the big screen and stuff. Honestly, that's that's a, a cute story about my dog from yesterday. <laughs> he's eight. He's he's like graying. He's he's old as hell now. <laughs> What's um, his name? Colby, like the cheese. Oh. I actually here's a, another cute story that's not so cute actually. I, I named him after a baseball player, Colby Rasmus, for they played for my Cardinals and they traded him like three months after we got him. So now oh. now it's Colby after the cheese. <laughs> I I'd wanted to name him after like a, a more important player to me. So I was thinking like Albert Pujols, I'll name him Pujols. I'm like, no, nah, that's weird. <laughs> People are gonna like, why are you calling your dog Pujol? That's, <laughs> that's rude. So Hello? my question was, um, you're obviously a voice actor. You do a lot of voice No, stuff. I, wrong panel, <laughs> <laughs> um, As someone who's interested in voice acting and getting into that um, area, do you have any advice for how to start and how to get out there and get into it? Yeah, so the short, I'll give the short and the long answer. The short answer is go to IWantToBeAVoiceActor.com. Uh, <laughs> yeah, D. Bradley Baker, who is Lion on Steven Universe, and Appa and Momo on The Last Airbender. <laughs> and all the animals and creatures in every cartoon ever. <laughs> ever. E ever. <laughs> he's, he's immortal. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he, he made this website for people that were asking him that exact question at conventions and the like, um, and it's a really good jumping off point and resource um, that he maintains. The, the long answer is uh, the, 
the things for me training wise that, that really benefited me the most were my, my musical theater training and my, my singing lessons. Um, vocal exercises and vocal, uh, yeah, woo, singing lessons. <laughs> doing, doing like all the, you know, me, 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 all that, you know, crazy singer stuff that really helped with my vocal control and, and stamina down the line. Thank you very much. Likewise, best of luck. Break a lip. Break a lip. So um, as far as like voice acting goes, if you could pick one of your favorite childhood franchises to have acted in, what would it be and why? Code Name Kids Next Door. Oh my God. <laughs> that, was my, that was my show growing up. I still have like VHS tape, because we didn't have Cartoon Network because my dad didn't want to get more than the basic cable package. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I give him too much crap. No, we, so I watch PBS Kids at home, like a plebeian. Um, and when I was at my grandparents' house, I would watch all my Cartoon Network shows and not spend time with them so I could watch Cartoon Network. Sorry, Grandma and Grandpa. Um, but I, I was like so addicted like, to, to all the cartoons at their house that they would make me VHS tapes of my favorite episodes, and I would like take them home and watch them over and over again. Um, yeah, and in retrospect, like, it, yeah, duh, I ended up doing this job, like, <laughs> that's, like, how all the, all the, the origin stories start, like, when I was five, like, I, I, I fell in love with doing this thing, but I really did watch Cartoon Network when I was that age, like, religiously, um, and I still have the illegal bootleg VHS tapes to prove it. Whoa. <laughs> of course. Whoa. Thank you so much. So, if they ever get that, uh, that Codename Kids Next Door reboot going, give me a call. Yeah. I'll, pl I'll play like not what DreamWorks is doing right now, obviously. No, that would be mad copyright infringement. Okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Be fine. Okay. All right. Well, firstly, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you, Zach. Likewise. Uh, uh, earlier when I uh, said you were 21 years old, the uh, thing is that I've gotten the autographs of just about all of the Crystal Gym actresses. You're all that's left. Uh, if you don't mind a moment afterwards. But uh, uh, earlier today, I was like, man, uh, what is, what are you, like, in your late teens? You must be, since you were probably voicing Steven since you mm -hmm. first uh, played the role, right? You were probably around his age at the time. Yeah, but I was then 14, I actually, when I started. We've come full circle. Yeah, well, when I looked up your uh, profile on Wikipedia, uh, just because I wanted to see if I was right about your age or not, how curiosity. I see that you're 21 years old, and I'm like, what? Yeah, man. Although, don't trust everything you see on my Wikipedia page, because for a long time, my middle name on there was Donald. My middle name is not Donald. Then, then what is it? It is Dean. <laughs> so I, guess, I guess they got the initial right. They just saw, like, Zachary D. Callison somewhere and was like, oh, pff, Donald, duh. Other cartoon character, Donald. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he was here at Momocon today. Yeah, Tony Mancello, right? This year. We, we've crossed paths in the studio before. He's cool. All right. Wait, which studio? Oh man, uh, some random studio. I was working. Oh on wait, some uh, Disney, first. Disney, right? I was working, yeah, on uh, Disney, Disney Junior at the time. I was doing some singing for Sophia the First, I think it was. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, here's my question. I want to ask you. <laughs> okay. When you started uh, on Steven Universe, playing the voice role for the main character, did you or any of your uh, friends? have any idea or had a feeling that Steven Universe might end up becoming the worldwide phenomenon it has become today? If I had that kind of predictive power, I would be a much wealthier man. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, that, not, not at all. I mean, I was, I was stoked to be the, the like principal character on a show for the first time. That, that was the first time I had booked a role of that, um, of that magnitude and I was like, oh cool, it's it's like it's a goofy like kids show, like regular show. Like I love this sh I love that show. Like this is this is gonna be great. And then like twenty episodes later, like we're singing and crying and screaming. I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. And then San Diego Comic Con 20, 2015, I think, jailbreak had just come out. Oh and, yes. And everything changed. I mean, the crowd was like going nuts and people were singing the songs and we were over capacity we had to turn people away and we two years in a row the year before that and that year we did joint panels with um with adventure time and the first Sweet. year like we, they were like piggybacking us onto them 
so that we could like get some promotion because nobody had heard of the show yet. And then the next year, it was like Stephen cosplayers dominating the whole room. Like everybody oh. was asking us questions, and um, they gave us our own panel the following year. Yeah. Well, it wasn't just Stephen cosplayers, was it? It was also a lot of gym cosplayers, right? Oh yeah, we love our cosplayers. You guys are the best. Yeah. There were some really good ones this weekend too. All right. Well, yeah. keep up the good work, especially with the Steven Universe movie coming out later this year. We it look is forward hype. to it. You're going to really like it. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Bye. We have a couple more minutes left, so like really quick like shotgun question answer. Let's go. Yesterday, Colby was wearing a Batman cape. Is Batman your favorite superhero? He's up there. I'm an Iron Man guy, but that's just... <laughs> That's the uh, that's the costume that, that he had handy. That's his c his uh, convention outfit. So. Get him a collar with okay, like a thank you. On it. Thank you. Nice. What up, Raven? Hi. <laughs> so I just want to know what was your favorite. Oh. Solid catch. <laughs> that was clutch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What's your favorite childhood TV show? Codename Kissing Shore was one of them. Um, I loved Arthur growing up. I loved. Uh, <laughs> What's that? Her gay rap wedding. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Rebecca tweeted about that. That's really important to bring bring attention to that. Um, yeah, that 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 was one of my like like I said, PBS Kids. I, that, some of my favorite shows were on there. Clifford the Big Red, Big Red Dog. Yeah. I used to like Caillou, and then I went back and watched it as an adult. I was like, Caillou. <laughs> yeah, Caillou is rude, bro. <laughs> He's so rude. Caillou's savage. Um, yeah, that, that was one, one of my favorites, unfortunately. Um, oh, Dragon Tales. I, I watched a lot of Dragon Tales. Yeah, I, I, like, was hanging out late night, like, after a party with some friends, and we put on Dragon Tales on Netflix or whatever it's on, or YouTube or something, and it doesn't hold up like we thought it would. The song's good, though. The song's dragon good. Tales, Dragon Tales. Something I don't know the rest. <laughs> I forgot. Tales. It's good. We, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, this may have to be our last. All right, um, going back to Skyrim for a second, what's your favorite race and weapon? <sighs> okay, I, I played a Khajiit first, but I ended up Same here. mostly playing an Imperial. Um, I, the Argonians are, have a special place in my heart, though. Yeah. For their erotic fan fiction, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> lusty, lusty Argonian Maid is an insta-classic, real page-turner. Um, Favorite weapon? I I I totally like and am the, the stereotypical meme Skyrim player, the like sneaky archer. <laughs> so I was I was always doing the sneaky archer thing. Um, I really I really like doing like dagger assassinations too. Like I was always like Dark Brotherhood, Thieves Guild, like yeah. All right, Sneak, thank you. Like punk gang. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for coming to this awesome panel. Thank you, Zach, for coming thank, this weekend. Thank you. We started with like twice as many people, or we, we ended with twice as many people as we started with, so I, I, guess, I guess the ratings are good. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, um, for, thanks for being here, guys. Yeah, thank you. So, um, again, you are going to go to autographs, and you're going to be there until... Yeah, so it, I, you said 2.30. I might, I might take a little more time, but like 2.45-ish, I think, I'll be, I'll be at the table and ready to, ready to meet you guys. It's my last one of the weekend. I'm flying out right after, so... And also, um, it's kind of like a self-plug, but like if you've already gone and met at the table, we are doing the Steven Universe sing-along in here right after this, so and we tend you in, continue on and, and sing in your, in your name while you're gone. Um, but thank you guys for coming. Uh, please feel free to go through the app and rate this panel if you liked it. So maybe we can have you come back again, hopefully soon. I, I'm always down for Momo. This is, this is home base. Awesome. So. Great. Thank you.